Hi everyone, Scott here. In this video, I'm going to be covering Activity 4-2, titled Working with Volumes in Disk Management, from the MCSA Guide to Installing and Configuring Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2. In my edition of the book, this activity starts at the bottom of page 131. So as we should all be familiar with, um, the server manager, the dashboard, as soon as you boot up a server with a GUI, this is the first thing that opens usually, it'll open automatically for you. Um, we're going to come up to our tools and go to computer management. And then on the left, we're going to select disk management. And this will show us the drives that we currently have installed into this machine. Uh, since this is a virtual, I've kept my drive sizes fairly small. If you're on a physical machine, you'll likely see that these are much larger drives. Um, so you have your disk zero, which is generally your C drive. Your operating system will be installed here. Um, you have your, in my case, disk one and two. These are additional drives that I've added just for extra storage space and just sort of to play around with the um, file system types, FAT32, NTFS down here. Um, the FAT32 we created back in Chapter 1, so if you haven't done that and want the experience, you can find that in Chapter 1. Creating the NTFS we did in Activity 4-1, so just before this activity. Alright, so to begin, um, we can take a look at a few things. Um, our options here for our NTFS, um, we can delete it, extend it, shrink it, format it, change drive letter, um, you notice that we can't add a mirror to it just yet. Um, in order to do that, you need a drive with enough space to properly mirror. We see that our unallocated space up here is not large enough, um, and this separate partition is the cause for that. Um, another thing is that we'll need to be converting these to dynamic disks rather than basic disks. You can do that here by selecting the disk itself rather than the partition, and you can convert the whole disk to a dynamic disk. Let me correct myself there. It'll correct, it'll change the partition to a dynamic disk. Um, this should still remain unallocated, so I won't merge the two together or extend this out yet. If you had a partition set up and you wanted to extend it, it's very straightforward. Just select Extend Volume, set your space. Um, it'll give you the total maximum amount you can extend. You don't have to do that exact amount. I'm going to set it for, say, 5,000 megabytes. Give it the finish, and we see that it's extended itself, made itself a little bit larger. Um, on the flip side, if it's large and you want to shrink it, you can come here to shrink that size down. I'm going to reduce it that 5,000 megabytes. Um, if you're unable to shrink a volume, that's generally caused by data being written across certain portions of that drive, towards the end of that drive, that prevent it from shrinking everything back down. Um, in that case, you might want to run a defrag, um, as it mentions here. Um, so for me, I'm just going to go ahead and shrink it back down, that 5,000 megabytes, and then we should be ready to pretty much get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, since I want all of this to be available, I'm going to delete my FAT32 volume, which gives me 20 gigs of unallocated space here. And the next thing is we are going to right click on our NTFS and select Add Mirror. Now that we have enough space to match it, or at least match it, We will see that, well, it didn't show it there. Let's try adding, and it should give us a warning. There we are. So we've selected a basic disk, and we can't mirror a basic disk. We need to convert them to dynamic disks. So I'm going to go ahead and say no for a moment. We will do that. Um, the first thing I want to do is look here, and on the disk itself, we do have options for spanning, striping, mirroring. Um, we can't set up a RAID 5 here. Um, we'd need three disks for that. But this will give us the option to convert to a dynamic, dynamic disk. Um, 
rather than going through adding a mirror at the same time, sometimes it's best to do one step at a time. So convert it to a dynamic disk, give it the OK, and you'll see that it turns from blue to green, showing it's a simple volume rather than a primary partition. We could go ahead and do the same thing for disk 1. Um, I'm going to show you how it will automatically do it if you go to add the mirror. So we add mirror, select disk 1, we'll get that warning again. Um, say yes, and it should automatically convert it to a dynamic, and then straight into a mirroring disk. And our color should change to red, showing that these are mirrored. Um, it'll take some time for them to sync any data. So it's taking any data on this disk, and it's writing it to this disk. So that way, if one of them fails, I still have a copy of my data. That might take several minutes. Um, with larger drives, that could take a significant amount of time. if during this process it fails to sync properly or fails to mirror you can remove it to stop it midway looks like we may be getting an error so I'm just going to tell it to remove the mirror and it should looks like it won't while it's still syncing but this shows that I could actually extend this drive or this partition out another 298 megabytes, and that way I'd be able to utilize this full disk, and it would merge the two together in the mirror. Um, I'm not going to sit here and drag this video out just while that process is syncing. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them for me below, and hopefully I'll see you all in my next video.